We begin, though, with North Korea, which has spent the first few weeks of this year thrusting itself onto the global agenda with bombs and rockets. On January the 6th, Pyongyang claimed it had tested a hydrogen bomb. At the weekend, it was condemned by the UN Security Council after launching a satellite into orbit in contravention of sanctions that prevent it from using ballistic missile technology. And today, in testimony to the US Senate Armed Services Committee, America's intelligence chief, James Clapper, said that North Korea had restarted one of its nuclear reactors in a further act of defiance. Mr Clapper gave this assessment of where things stand. On Saturday evening, Pyongyang conducted a satellite launch and subsequently claimed that the satellite was successfully placed in orbit. Additionally, last month, North Korea carried out its fourth nuclear test, claiming it was a hydrogen bomb, but the yield was too low for it to have been a successful test of a staged thermonuclear device. Pyongyang continues to produce fissile material and develop a submarine-launched ballistic missile. It is also committed to developing a long-range nuclear-armed missile that's capable of posing a direct threat to the United States, although the system has not been flight-tested. The U.S. Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper. So the rest of the world may be united in condemnation, but what can it do about it? Well, when that question is asked, all heads automatically turn towards North Korea's only real regional ally, China. Beijing is clearly getting increasingly frustrated by Kim Jong-un's actions, but how long will it tolerate them? Professor Cheng Li is a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution in Washington. In a sense that China cannot tolerate even now, because nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula will directly undermine China's interest. And uh, North Korea leader is a problem for China. It's not a secret. And also that uh, the nuclearization of the Korean Peninsula will not only make China very uncomfortable dealing with this previously called communist little brother, but also will let some other countries like Japan and South Korea may move to the same direction, that will be a nightmare for China. So therefore, Chinese leadership is very firm. And uh, in recent years, they already changed the, the priority. Previously, the priority is the stability of the Korean Peninsula, but now it's non-nuclear polarization. So that's a major change. But at the same time that uh, China faces a lot of challenges, and uh, Chinese government usually don't like to use economic sanction to deal with any problems. So do they so have any the, alternative plans? Well, alternative plans, China will continue to give pressure, all kinds of pressure, sometimes public, sometimes private, and uh, they may even explore some options. But uh, let's face it, I mean, no, no country has the solution. Regime change uh, may be an option, but uh, what uh, they can do... Is, is that uh, something that China has considered? Well, China will not say that uh, publicly, but I think privately they also start to consider. But we should put in the context. China uh, is concerned about um, what all this means if that uh, happens, whether the unified Korean will lead towards the United States and become a force to contain China. But if that's the case, even worse than the current situation, because China will be insulated and will become a major target by the United States. So that's a difficult choice for China. So is China getting to the point where it's going to have to make that very difficult choice, do you think? I think that the, the fact that the Xi Jinping is coming to Washington at the end of March to attend the nuclear security summit tells you China's position. China wants to cooperate with the United States, but at the same time, China hopes that the international community will also understand China's position. China's influence or control over North Korea is limited. What about under President Xi Jinping? Has China's attitude changed under his leadership in particular? Absolutely. Under Xi Jinping leadership, China really improved its relationship with South Korea. And China also wants to use the United Nations and the resolution to make sure that North Korea will follow the UN resolution in terms of non a nuclearization of a Korean Peninsula. Although China is concerned about the prospect of this missile defense system that uh, the Americans are talking about placing in South Korea. Yes, yes, absolutely. This is, will continue to be seen by the Chinese public and some of the leaders that uh, it's part of a U.S. conspiracy against China, first to make North Korea to be enemy with China or China to be enemy with North Korea, 
then continue to consolidate the U.S.-led alliance. Of course, whether it's true or not true, this is debatable. And uh, the DOD secretary just a few days ago made a statement basically saying that uh, Russia and China are future enemy. Now, under these kind of circumstances, how could you expect the Chinese leaders will completely, completely follow U.S.-led effort to deal with North Korea? No, they will do something differently. Professor Cheng Li of the Brookings Institution in Washington. Joe Silincioni is president of the Plowshares Fund, an organization dedicated to achieving a safe, nuclear weapons-free world. He also serves on the U.S. Secretary of State's International Security Advisory Board. So what else do we know about the nuclear reactor that Mr. Clapper is saying has been restarted? The big news isn't that they've restarted the reactor. They actually started that up in September of 2013. It's been off and on for the past couple of years. The big news is what he says in the second part of his statement is that they've produced enough plutonium in that reactor that they soon might shut it down within weeks or months, he says, pull out the fuel of the reactor and reprocess it to put, get that plutonium out. We estimate that there's at least enough plutonium for one, maybe two more bombs in that reactor load. And how has this happened? Have have people simply not been aware that this was taking place? Oh, we knew. We just didn't have an effective strategy for stopping it. I mean, the sad truth is that the strategy of the Bush administration, basically regime change, didn't stop North Korea's program. They tested for the first time under George W. Bush. And the Obama strategy of strategic patience, that is basically trying to ignore North Korea, didn't work either. They tested three more times. So North Korea has advanced under both Republican and Democratic administrations. And seems to be frustrating its ally China as well. Just as the professor said, China would like to stop North Korea, but they have not hit on a good strategy. I think there's elements of the proposals from both China and the U.S. that could work. The U.S. wants to increase sanctions, increase the pressure. That's right. You have to do that. China wants to get us back to negotiations. That is also right. The purpose of increased sanctions should be to pressure North Korea to come to the table unconditionally to at least freeze its nuclear program, and then we can talk about the possibility of rolling it back. But we heard from Professor Lee that the Chinese feel that they've tried Mm. sanctions and it hasn't really worked. Well, Professor said they're reluctant that China doesn't like to use sanctions as a tool of pressure, but they could. China is North Korea's main economic lifeline. They could restrict further the flow of goods into North Korea, and most importantly, they could restrict its oil supplies. If China wanted to apply more pressure, they certainly could, understanding that they will never put enough pressure on the North Korean regime to cause its collapse. That is China's worst nightmare. Right. So what is your sense at this point? Do you think China is minded to push ahead with those sort of plans? (laughs) I honestly don't know. I wish I could say that both the United States and China were about to come to some agreement. Perhaps, as the professor pointed out, when the Chinese president comes here in March, there might be a personal meeting between Obama and the Chinese president, and we might get a little more cooperation. But until we do something different... The bad news is that North Korea is just going to keep testing. They do not have a nuclear missile that can reach Europe or the United States right now. But if they keep trying, they will get one. What will the United States do in that case, do you think? There is no really effective defense against a determined foe. The kind of missile defenses we're putting up, the ones we've deployed in Alaska and California, for example, even the operation of the test director for the Pentagon admits that it's a weak system. The National Academy of Sciences calls it fragile and ineffective against even a primitive threat. So even a basic nuclear missile with the basic countermeasures could spoof any U.S. missile defense plan. The only way to stop a North Korean missile threat is to convince North Korea not to deploy it in the first place. And that was Joe Silincioni of the Plowshares Fund speaking to me from Washington.